Could the U.S. be headed back to a gold-backed dollar and an end to the Federal Reserve? I'm Robin Kinderman, and you're watching JBS Straight Talk. Last week, President Trump surprised many when he announced that he would nominate Judy Shelton, a gold standard advocate and longtime critic of the Federal Reserve, to fill one of two open seats on the Federal Reserve's Board of Governors. For those of you who may not be familiar with the Federal Reserve, it is the central banking system of the United States, established on December 23, 1913. However, don't let its name fool you, because it is not federal, nor does it have a reserve. Although it was created by an act of Congress and the president nominates who serves on its board of governors, the Fed operates as an independent bank with no congressional oversight or audit of its books. The Federal Reserve produces our nation's money supply, which it lends to the federal government with interest. This results in an endless cycle of debt that is virtually impossible to pay off. On top of that, the Fed also sets our nation's interest rates, affecting everything from the stock market to mortgages to school loans. So where does the Fed's money come from? Honestly, it's created out of thin air. When the Fed needs more, they just print more. There is no gold or silver backing it. Take a look at any dollar bill. See where it says this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private? It didn't always say that. It used to say redeemable in gold on demand at the United States Treasury or in gold or lawful money at any Federal Reserve Bank. What America has now is fiat money currency without intrinsic value that has been established as money by government regulation. This became our standard when President Richard Nixon ended the gold standard in 1971, when he signed an executive order in the name of stopping inflation and gold runs. Unfortunately, Americans were fooled into thinking that that would work. But since the Fed can now print money whenever it feels like it, the dollar has dramatically decreased in value, resulting in horrendous inflation. In his book, The Creature from Jekyll Island, G. Edward Griffin reports that in 1990, the income of $10,000 per year was equivalent to $1,000 per year in 1914. This is closer to $25,000 today. So if Judy Shelton is approved by the Senate, does that mean we might see a return to the gold standard? While that would be ideal, it's unlikely. Former Fed Chairman Alan Greenspan also praised gold before becoming Fed Chair in 1987, and nothing changed in terms of returning to a gold standard. And despite Shelton's conservative monetary positions, she's also a strong advocate of open borders and praised former Mexican President Vicente Fox, who envisioned using the proposed FTAA to create a European Union-style union for all of the Americas with its own currency like the euro, replacing the dollar. When championing sound money, be wary of Shelton's globalist pedigree. Hopefully, her nomination will spur a debate in the Senate about our nation's monetary policy and the idea of returning to a gold or silver-backed dollar. We encourage you to become more educated about the Fed and our nation's money by reading The Creature from Jekyll Island and our booklet Dollars and Cents. Both of these are available at shopjbs.org. Remember, without a properly educated electorate, we stand no chance of keeping our republic intact. Until next week, take care and God bless.